Okay, so we're back here for our third Venn diagram practice argument. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more challenging, more challenging than the ones we've covered so far. And in large part, that's because our two premises, one and two, are both particular statements. And for that matter, our conclusion is a particular statement as well. So these ones take a little bit more precision and a little bit more attention to detail to properly diagram these. So let's go ahead, let's break it down to, um, into its simple form, and then we'll go ahead and we will um, use a Venn diagram to test for validity. Okay, so some actors are sculptors. Let's do this. We can go sum A, sum A R S, sum P are not A, premise two, conclusion, therefore sum P are not S. Okay. Again, that makes it a little bit easier to look at the form of the argument, um, getting the words out of the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a Venn diagram here, then we can check this out. Okay, there are three circles there. So P would go here. S would go here, and A, our middle term, go right up top there, okay? Again, where you place the letters um, doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. I always follow this method because it's the same every time. Middle term goes on the left circle, major term goes to the right, middle term on top. You can do it differently, but make sure you're consistent throughout. Okay, now we got to be careful here. Premise one, premise two, both particular, so it doesn't matter what order um, we start with. We'll go ahead and start with premise one here. Some actors are sculptors, some A are S. Okay, so we're looking at these two circles here. So we have our A circle, we have our S circle. Okay, so we're told at least one A exists and one A is an S. Okay. So we want to look at the area of overlap between A and S, which would be right there, okay? So it could either be in this area, which is empty, or this area, which is empty. Now, we really don't know. We know that 1A is an S, but we don't know if it should go in this circle. I mean, if we put it here, we're saying 1A exists, A is S, but at the same time, it's not a P, because it's outside of the P circle. If we put our X here, we're saying A is an S. It's in the overlapping circle between A and S, but it's also a P, because now we've included it in the P circle. The problem with doing that is we don't know whether A is a P or not. So what we would do in this case we would put the X right on the line. Okay, that tells us our X could be here, could be here. We really don't have enough information to make that determination, whether it should be there or there. So we just put it on the X. Okay, so that tells me if I'm reading this, it could go into either, um, either part of the circle, either this one or that one. Okay, so that's premise one. Premise two... Um, same scenario, some pets are not, or some poets are not actors. I don't think a pet would be an actor, do you? Probably not. <laughs> okay, so some P are not A. Okay, so we want to here look at the P circle, and we want to look at the, um, the P circle that's outside of the S circle. Okay, so we know one P exists, but it's not an A. So again, we could put it here, that same P exists, but it's outside of A, it's not an A. Or we could put it here, 
one P exists that's outside of A, but here we're saying it's an S. Here we're saying it's not an S. Well, we really don't know. We don't have enough information. So in this case, like before, we want to put it right on the line, and that tells us it could go into either section of the, of the circle there. Okay. So we've got our two premises diagrammed. We look at the conclusion, some poets are not sculptors. Well, we have our X here, it could be there, in which case our premises would be true and the conclusion false. Okay, so this argument here would be invalid. Okay, but I'll just give you a little handy um, tip here. Whenever you have your two X's on the lines, it's always going to be invalid. So there you go. That's real easy to remember. If you ever see the X's on the lines, uh, the argument will always be invalid, um, simply because we don't have enough information to determine whether some P or not S. Could be, might not be, we can't guarantee it, so therefore it would be, they'd be invalid. Okay, this is one of the tougher ones. If you got that, you're on the right track. If you didn't get it, keep practicing. It will come, I guarantee it. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck.